Today in our 2016 GMC 2500, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the B&W Turnover Ball Underbed Gooseneck Trailer Hitch with Custom Install Kit. Part number BWG NRK1016. Now here's what it's going to look like once it's installed. Now we can pull the pin from the driver's side fender well. And we'll pull the ball up. We can flip it over, drop it back down, it's stowed away. Another nice feature about this is it's got these spring-loaded safety chain hold downs. So when they're not in use, they're going to be pretty flush to the floor. When you want to flip over your ball, you're just going to pull out on this and pull it to the front. That locks it in the open position. Once you flip the ball over, just pull out, push it to the back release it and that locks the ball back into position. Now with the B&W side plate it's going to use factory weld nuts to attach so there's going to be no drilling or having to fish any wires or nuts inside our frame. It's just going to bolt onto the side of the frame rail. The only holes you're going to have to drill is going to be the four inch hole for the center and four half inch holes for our safety chains. Now this gooseneck hitch is designed for 30,000 pounds of gross trailer weight, which is the amount of our loaded trailer, and a 7,500 pound vertical load limit, which is the amount on the ball. It's a 2 and 5 16 ball. It's going to be a complete undermount system. You're not going to be required to remove your bed or do any welding. It's simply going to slide in between by cutting, cutting a notch in our, in our channel on the side of the bed, sliding our braces in, and standing them upright, and attaching our center section. Since our ball has a square base, if it was ever to become locked up inside of our gooseneck ball uh, uh, hitch for some reason, it's not going to rotate around in there because it's attached in a square form. And it's drilled on both sides so you can put it in either way and not have to worry about always lining it up. It's also going to have a large 5 8 diameter pin that's going to lock it into place. That way you know that your load is going to be secure. When you pull it out when it's upside down, there's a nice little handle in here you just grab with your finger. The rounded edge here is going to allow the dirt and grime to slip down through and not make it difficult to get the ball in and out of the receiver. Now our hitch, our side plates, and all the underbed components are going to be powder coated in this gray finish that's going to help protect against rust and corrosion and keep it working well for years to come. It tucks up nicely in between our bed rails here not going to make any contact with our exhaust. The only thing you do have to remove is that heat shield that originally went across the top of our exhaust here. With our new gooseneck in place, it's not going to allow the heat to pass up through there anyway. You can also see our spring-loaded safety chain loops. It's going to always keep them in the down position when not in use. And they're going to be really easy to pull up from the top and attach your safety chains. You can also see this is a custom design where it's going to have plenty of clearance over top of our, over top of our fuel tank, so that's not going to be an issue. Now that we've gone over some of the features and <clears throat> how well it fits, let's go ahead and show you how simple it is to install. Now we've gone ahead and dropped down our spare tire, and the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to remove these inner fender well liners if your vehicle is so equipped. Now using a T15 Torx, there's going to be 13 screws that hold them in. Be two on the back side, gonna be three along the top. We're gonna have a couple down the sides here. So we'll go ahead and remove all of those screws. We'll set this aside for reinstallation at a later time. Now, with our spare tire out of the way, this part is completely optional, but it does give you a little bit more room to work under here. We're going to go ahead and take off this heat shield as well with two 13 millimeter bolts. And we'll set this aside for later. Now, our next step is going to be remove this heat shield here. We're going to have one bolt on the top of the frame in the back here, one up here in the front on top. There's going to be two on the side that we can get from the from the outside once we lower down the vehicle. So go ahead and take these two out with a 13 millimeter wrench. We're 
Now from the passenger side, we'll have two more screws right here, or bolts. Now we can move to the bottom side and take out our heat shield. We can just set this aside. Now we're going to need to lower our exhaust down a little bit. We're going to start by taking off these rubber isolators. There's one back here, two in the front, and one a little further out of that. So we'll take a safety strap just to support it while we loosen it up. Now our vehicle is new and it still has a little bit of grease on these on these grommets, but if, it, if your vehicle has got a little miles on it, you probably want to take a little bit of spray lubricant and just spray it up so it'll slide off a little easier. And just push it aside and we'll move towards the front. Now we can lower down our safety strap. That'll give us just enough clearance to get our plate installed in there. Now we want to mark out our center, our, our drill mark. Make sure you use the mark for the, either a long bed or short bed, depending on what you have. Per our instructions, we're going to go ahead and mark it out. From the back edge to the center point, where we're going to go, and then we're going to go from, from the center of the vehicle. We've determined that's going to be the center point of our vehicle. Now we're going to take a four inch hole saw and we're going to drill down through the bed. Once we have our hole, we're going to clean off our area. We'll file out the edges from the bottom side. Then we can take some black touch up paint and cover up all of our bare metal to ensure we're not going to have any corrosion problems. Now our next step is we're going to have to cut a V to be able to get our hardware through there. So we're going to measure forward of this channel here on the passenger side, about two inches. And we're going to go ahead and just cut a, a notch. I'm going to do is just make two cuts. I'm going to go up here and up on this side and we can fold this piece up. When we're done, we'll just fold it back down. And our, fen our fender line will cover everything up. Now we can take a sawzall. We're just going to cut up. I'm going to take a pair of pliers. Tap that out of the way. And the first thing we're going to put in is going to be our front cross member. It's going to be the piece of channel iron with the two notches on the ends. And there's a bigger notch on one side that's going to be for our passenger side. We're going to slide that. Then we're just going to take it and slide it to the front. Go on the other side, we'll slide it forward. Now it's going to clear over top of our fuel tank and our lines. We'll just have to kind of push them gently out of the way. We want to just make sure we push it as far forward as we can for now. Then we're going to slide in our rear channel. Now our rear cross member is a solid steel plate with pre-threaded holes. It's always a good idea to go ahead and take your bolts and run them down through those and make sure there's no powder coat blocking up the holes. And you can see here, the holes are kind of offset from the center. So you're going to want to place the bar in there with the holes to the bottom side. So I went ahead and put an arrow on the end. It's going to help us orient it once it's in the vehicle. So you don't make any mistakes. I'm going to slide your bar in. Now we'll take a crescent wrench. It's going to help us in turning up this bar as it's going to hit the floor a little bit as it goes up. So once it's up into place, we're going to slide it all the way back. We'll do that on both sides. Now our front cross member, we're going to be using the shorter of the half inch bolt. This one here on the driver's side all the way at the end, we're going to slide that one in right now before we put our center section in. And we'll take this supplied O-ring and we're going to roll it down over it. It's going to help hold that bolt in place. 
because we won't really have access to it since it's over top of the gas tank once the center section is in place. Now we've installed our lifting device that's hanging down through the hole. Now if you don't have one, if you have a cherry picker, or you can get a couple of blocks and a, with a board across the top and a rope, just setting the hole or center section up into place as we start to attach it. Now we'll get a second set of hands and we're going to set this up into place and attach it to our lifting device. Now we can go to the bottom side and we'll start attaching our bolts. Now before we start putting our bolts into our brackets up there, on our front cross member we're going to have a half inch diameter by one and a half inch bolt that's going to slide through our bracket. And on the other side it's going to have a split lock washer and a nut. On the rear cross member we're going to have this half inch by two inch long bolt. It'll get a lock washer and a flat washer and it threads into the rear cross member because it is actually threaded into where this one's going to pass through. So we're going to go ahead and start by putting in our long bolts at the rear. We'll slide this forward. And we can start by sliding our bolt through the hole. We'll go ahead and install all four of the rear ones first. Now we'll take our Crescent wrench and we're going to roll up our front bracket. And we're going to slide it through, lining up the bolt on the passenger side. We'll go ahead and put one of the bolts through. Now you want to take care when you're pushing it back up there that you don't knock that bolt out that we put in with the O-ring earlier. You want to make sure you put the lock washer and the nut on the inside. And the last one we'll get is going to be the one with the O-ring on it. So we're going to just go ahead and hand tighten all of our bolts. We're just going to get them all drawn up to the outside of our center section so we can make sure we have everything lined up properly. We're using a three-quarter inch ratcheting wrench. We'll just go ahead and snug them all down by hand. Then we'll work our way out to the end plate. You don't want to tighten these too tight because you might have to shift it one way or the other. You just want to snug them down. Now our side plates are going to be attached to the frame using these factory weld nuts that are already in the frame. They're going to be 16 millimeter bolts by about an inch and a half. We'll have a lock washer and a flat washer. Now it's a good idea to clean out some of this undercoating to make the bolt go in a little easier. If you don't have a nylon tubing brush, you can pick one up on our website, part number 814092. Just kind of clean out the two centered holes. We're going to take our bracket and slide it up into place. We'll put in our 16 millimeter bolts. Now that's one of the reasons you don't want to tighten up our center section too tight just yet because we want to be able to have some adjustment here to get the rest of our bolts into place. Now we're going to take one of our half inch by inch and a half long bolts. We're going to slide it through the front side. We'll place a flat washer followed by a split lock washer and a nut. We'll make that one hand tight as well. Just kind of run it down. Then to the rear one, we're going to take another one of those bolts with a flat washer and a lock washer in place. We'll run that bolt down as well. And we'll repeat the same process for the driver's side as well. Now we can go ahead and start tightening up our center section bolts. Next step is going to be go ahead and torque them down to the specifications and our instructions. Now with our bracket still loose on the side here, we went ahead and measured from the front of this hat channel to the front edge of this rear cross member and made sure they're equal on both sides. That way we know our hitch is going to be in the truck square. Then we can take a 15-16 socket and we're going to run these down. We'll do that on both sides. Now we'll torque to, these, to the specifications that are in our instructions. We want to do the side plates first 
And the last thing we'll torque down to them, these two half inch bolts on the side here. And once we have those torqued down, as well as the other side, we're going to go ahead and bend this tabs back down. We'll be ready to put our fender liner back in place. Now since this is going to be hidden by our fender liner, we're going to go ahead and just take some black paint. We're going to touch it up. That way we don't have any corrosion issues. Now one of the last things we're going to have to do is install our safety chain hooks. So we're going to use a half inch drill bit to mark out our holes. It's going to help center up our hole. We'll do that to all four of them. Once we have them centered, we're going to take a small drill bit and we'll drill up from the bottom side. We'll go ahead and drill out our pilot holes. Now we can go up from the from the inside of the bed and we're going to drill down through with our half inch drill bit. Now we'll clean up our area and we can drop our safety chain loops down through. We'll take our hooks. We want to make sure they go up and down easily. Now we'll go to the bottom side and install the springs and nuts. Now at the bottom side we're going to have this spring. It's going to have a larger diameter round on, ring on one side. We're going to put the larger side up. Then we'll take the blocking nuts that are supplied with them. We'll start it on there. Do the same thing on the other side. And we'll repeat for the other side. Now we want to run these up until you just start to see the threads come out the bottom side and that'll be tight enough. Oop, too much. And these are locking nuts so they won't come loose. Now we're going to take our handle from the driver's side. We're going to slide it through. We're going to run it in until it's just in front of our locking bar. Take the supplied carriage bolt. We're going to place it through. Then we'll slip our handle up on the other side. Then we'll install the locking nut that comes with the bolt. Then we're going to take a 13 millimeter socket. And we're just going to run this down. Make it nice and snug. We still want to be able to have a little bit of flex in it. Now with our exhaust drawn back up into place, we can slide our exhaust hangers back in. And we can lower down our safety strap and our exhaust is resecured. Now we can reinstall our heat shield with our two bolts. Now the heat shield we removed over the top of the exhaust there will not be reinstalled as it's not going to fit with our with our gooseneck installed. Take our 13 millimeter and we'll tighten these back up. Now we can reinstall our fender liners. We'll slip them up over the tire. And then we'll tuck in the ends and reinstall our screws. Now we can move on to the other side. Now this side's going to have the handle to contend with, so we're going to go ahead and get it up into place. So we're just going to have to cut a little notch in there. Now we can reinstall the screws on this side, and this side will be done as well. look at and install of the B&W turnover ball under bed gooseneck trailer hitch with custom install kit part number BWG NRK 1016 on our 2016 GMC 2500.